Another day, another mortgage rule change. Ooh, if you're finding it hard to keep up, don't worry. You're in the right place. This is Live at Lunch. Thank you so much for joining me on Lambros Demos. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the latest uh, rule change in the mortgage world, as well as the um, September stats, which just came out uh, earlier this morning. And uh, take your questions as always right here, right now. Uh, thank you again for joining me um, on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Rebecca, hi, how are you? Um, I'll take your questions here. I'll take your comments here. I'll take your likes here by all means. Uh, um, and uh, yeah, so I like to keep this as interactive as possible. So right off the bat, um, if you recall two weeks ago, uh, I talked about some rule changes that came in the mortgage world um, that uh, the, the federal government brought in. Uh, those included uh, bringing back 30-year amortizations uh, for first-time home buyers, as well as increasing the cap on uh, insured mortgages, uh, sorry, uninsured mortgages to $1.5 million uh, versus the $1 million. Uh, so Rebecca is asking, do you foresee an interesting rate drop? Um, so I'm assuming you're talking about the U.S., Rebecca, because uh, if, um, uh, if I am uh, correct, I believe you are in the U.S., and I think the, the states just had a rate cut. So I don't follow uh, the U.S. Uh, economy as well as I follow here in Canada. Um, so I'm not sure what's going to happen there, but uh, I hear talk that there will be uh, more rate cuts coming uh, especially here in Canada, we have another rate announcement on uh, October 23rd, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and there's um, a 60-40 bet that uh, we will have not only a rate cut, but a larger rate cut than we've seen. We've had three rate cuts so far in Canada, 0.25% uh, each time. Uh, down, So it's come down 0.75% uh, since June. Um, and now people are calling for a 50 point uh, rate cut. So a half percent rate cut, um, which will be very interesting if it happens. And I think that's going to, um, you know, reignite the market a little bit, get people excited a little bit. But again, I I'm, I'm thinking too far ahead. Let's have it happen first and see. Um, so uh, thank you for your question, Rebecca. Always appreciate it. Uh, so I can't speak too much to the U.S. market, but here in Canada, yes, I do see an interesting um, or an interest rate coming uh, this month, at least, and it could be a big one. So maybe the U.S. will do the same thing. I'm not sure. Um, but thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your question. If anyone else has any questions, by all means, uh, feel free to post it here. You can interrupt me. Uh, that's no problem. So getting back to what I was saying about mortgage rule changes. So we did see a couple of big changes come in a couple of weeks ago. Uh, now another one has come in from OFSFI, uh, the Office of uh, whatever <laughs> superintendent uh, financial institutions. Um, so they have now eliminated the stress test for those people renewing mortgages and switching lenders. So what does all this mean and how does it affect you? Okay, so we're going to backtrack here a little bit. The stress test uh, was brought in, uh, I believe, in 2017 or 2018. Uh, and it, whenever you go to apply for a mortgage, let's say you, um, the bank's going to look at your uh, credit history, they're going to look at your income, they're going to look at your debts, they're going to and calculate that, okay, we can give you a, let's say, a 3.5% interest rate. Uh, with the stress test, however, they have to qualify you at two points higher than that, so that you have to qualify at 55 uh, percent interest rates or at the um, at the standard which is a 5.45 I believe if it's still there or 5.25 I'm not sure um, whichever is higher okay so, but let's go with the two points higher uh, so you, let's say you get a three and a half percent rate from your bank but you have to qualify at five and a half okay so this obviously decreases your buying power, your purchasing power, power. So you can't buy as much house as you wanted to. So now that forces you to look at something smaller uh, or maybe put in a larger down payment, maybe get somebody else in on the mortgage. Uh, and that way, uh, you know, you can boost your purchasing power. So that's been um, the situation since about 2018. But the problem is they also included the stress test on renewals. 
So the other difference that we have here in Canada versus the U.S. is when you take out a mortgage in the U.S. and it's a, a 30 year amortization, you have that same interest rate for 30 years. So if you got lucky and um, had a low interest rate, you don't have to worry about it for the next 30 years. But here in Canada, we have to renew every, you know, it could be three years, could be four years, could be five years, sometimes one year, uh, sometimes 10 years. Uh, so there's, there's a, a renewal term. And the most common renewal term is five years. So those people who bought in 2020 uh, are now coming up for renewal in 2025. Uh, and their timing is excellent because before, if they wanted to switch lenders, they would have to be re-stress tested. Whereas if they stayed with their current lender, they don't have to be re-stress tested. So you can imagine how much of an advantage that gives the current lender. So let's say you're TD Bank, okay? Not to pick on TD Bank, but let's just say uh, here's TD Bank. They see that your renew renewal is coming up. And if you've been a good soldier and you've paid your... Um, uh, your, your monthly mortgage payments, haven't missed a payment, you know, and been great about it, what they'll do is they'll just offer you a straight renewal letter, okay? So they won't even bother requalifying you. Uh, they'll send you a renewal letter and say, okay, hey, Lambros, you've been great paying your mortgage uh, for the last five years. Um, we'd like you to renew, and this is the rate that uh, we're offering you, okay? Um, and let's say they offered me a, uh, you know, five and a half uh, percent interest rate, which is gonna be much higher than what I took out in 2020, right? Um, because interest rates have come, gone up. But, you know, me being a prudent uh, borrower, you know, will do my research online and say, hey, you know what, I can go to Royal or I can go to Scotia or I can go anywhere else, maybe a monoline lender and get, you know, a much better rate. Maybe I can get a four and a half rate, 4.75, maybe even five, whatever it is, right? Um, but in order to do that, I have to be re-stress tested. Okay, so now let's say uh, Scotia offers me a 5% interest rate. TD's offering me five and a half with no stress test. But Scotia gives me a better rate, but now I have to qualify at 7% because again, the stress test applies. So I'm handcuffed to TD Bank. So basically, uh, home owners are handcuffed to their current lender because they know the, the current lender knows they're going to be stressed at it elsewhere so they don't have to give them the best rate right um, and this is a, a position of strength from the lender uh, and that why that that's why um, a lot of people just stay with their current lender because it's much easier and uh, they don't have to requalify with the stress test but now that's all changed okay so now what they're saying is you can go to scotia you can go to royal you can go to any other a bank or lender you want and you don't have to be stress tested. I believe the competition bureau bureau stepped in here uh, and this is a good thing for uh, homeowners and uh, home buyers because now um, there's there's uh, more options for you right and you don't have to worry about being stress tested and and not qualifying etc and having to pay a higher interest at your current lender okay so hope all that makes sense for people and this is good news uh, because there's going to be a lot of um, uh, renewals, mortgage renewals coming up, you know, whether it's the end of this year or most of them are going to be happening next year. Because don't forget, the market really took off in uh, the spring and summer of 2020. That's when we saw the huge uptick in uh, home sales. We were setting uh, records for home sales uh, in the second half of 2020 and all of 2021. So the second half of 2025 and all of 2026, we're going to see a ton of renewals. Uh, so, uh, so this is great timing uh, for these people now that, that they can switch lenders uh, or shop around at least. Maybe they're sticking with their own lender because now that lender is going to smarten up and say, hey, you know what, you know, I don't want to lose my client to another bank, to the competition, so I'm going to give them a better rate. So this is good news all around uh, for, for people. All right. So again, if you have any questions on this stuff, uh, by all means, uh, you know, please post them here. Or if you'd rather send me a DM, that's fine too. Um, you know, I'm happy to answer it on the DM. Uh, or if you're watching this on the replay, uh, I'll get to it as soon as I can. Um, the thing when, when this is live, when I'm live and I can answer the questions live, maybe it helps other people who are watching as well. So you don't know who else you're helping by asking these questions. All right, moving on.
to the September stats, which just came out this morning. Uh, a little disappointing from my end. I thought they would be a lot better, uh, but I have them all written down here for you, and I'll go through them real quick. I don't want to bore anybody. Um, we'll start with price. Uh, we did see slight gains in price uh, all across the board. And this is month over month. It's nothing to get too excited about. Uh, in Toronto, uh, home prices went up about 8%. In Mississauga, um, under half a percent. So I'm not going to call it going up. Uh, it basically stayed flat. Uh, in Brampton, it went up about 5%. And in Oakville, it went up uh, 11%. But be careful with Oakville because it is a small sample size. So again, this doesn't mean much. Don't read too much into it. It doesn't mean home prices are going up again long term because we have to see uh, a repetitive pattern uh, happening in order to, to say that. But what it does mean is that prices are not coming down, right? And a lot of people thought, oh, prices are going to tank. You know, the market's going to crash. Prices are coming down. Well, that's just not the case, you know. And going back to last year, prices are still pretty flat year over year. So they haven't come down very much when you compare it to uh, uh, 12 months ago. Uh, and now month over month, they're not coming down. Just the opposite, they're, they're upticking a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, then we look at the inventory. Okay, so supply went up in Toronto about 5%. Um, and sales... Sorry, sorry, supply went up 16%, my bad. Uh, supply went up 16% and sales volume went up only 5%, okay? So that means that the months of inventory is going, getting longer uh, and this is a, a good time for home buyers because now there's more options for people, okay? The market's not tightening, it's actually, um, you know, there's, there's more and more inventory out there for people and things aren't moving the way people were anticipating uh, they would be moving. Right. So uh, and I, I anticipated that, you know, after about the second half of September into the fall, into October, that things would start picking up. So we're not there yet, but let's see if it continues. Um, then we look at Mississauga. We saw inventory go up about nine percent in Mississauga uh, and sales activity come came down about three percent in Mississauga. And this is month over month. Um, so from August to September. Uh, so again. An increase in inventory, an increase in the months of inventory, uh, and so things are slowing down a little bit, still slowing down. And this is overall September, right? So if you break September in half, I believe the first uh, two weeks were very slow. Uh, the second two weeks were a little bit better. So hopefully things are picking up a little bit as we move uh, further and further into the fall market. Then we look at Brampton. We saw inventory up by 7%. And again, sales volume drop by 4%. So same story uh, as Mississauga, the, month, the months of inventory is getting bigger. Uh, in Oakville, again, keep in mind, it's a small sample size, uh, but we did see inventory up about 13% uh, and sales volume tick up only about 2%. Okay, so similar story all across the board. Uh, that's what's happening here. Um, and, and for those um, who are wondering what this all means, um, Basically, we've seen three interest rate cuts so far, as I mentioned before. There's another interest rate announcement coming uh, later this month, okay? And people are anticipating a big one. At some point in time, all these interest rate cuts and all these mortgage rule changes uh, is going to increase consumer confidence. Right now, consumer confidence is really low, and that's why we're seeing very low sales volume. But at some point, it's going to change because that's what happens uh, in, in the real estate market. Things go up and down. So at some point, you know that the sentiment is going to change. Maybe it's going to take another rate cut, maybe a couple more rate cuts, whatever it is. At some point, you know it's going to turn around. Um, and when that happens, that's when prices will start going up again. Um, so if we look at the picture right now, inventory is growing, right? Uh, rates are coming down as well. Um, and the sentiment is pretty negative, right? So once that sentiment turns positive, you're going to see a lot of buyers going back into the market. So as a home buyer right now, if you're looking right now, why not get ahead of that, right? Before the market takes off a bit. If you were sitting on the sidelines waiting for prices to come down, they've proven that they're not coming down. They haven't come down in, in the last year. They're not coming down month over month, just the opposite. They're inching up a little bit. 
why would you wait until they start going up faster? Because uh, like I said, um, rates are going to com keep coming down. The sentiment is going to change at some point. I don't know if it's going to be next month. I don't know if it's going to be in three months. I don't know if it's going to be in six months. Nobody knows. But at some point, it will change. So as a prudent home buyer, you, you know, you would be wise to try to get into the market now before all that happens because the prices start going up again and you're going to be pricing yourself out of the market. That's just my opinion. If somebody has a different opinion, by all means, uh, share it here. Um, I'd love to hear it. All right. So getting back to the stats here, um, as I said, uh, year over year, um, the market has picked up with respect to sales activity year over year. Uh, but month over month, uh, things are still pretty slow. Um, in my opinion, I think they're going to start picking up in October, especially if we have that big rate cut coming up. Um, as far as condos goes, uh, I looked at condos slightly again, not much change there. Things are pretty slow on the con in the condo market. Um, in fact, they're down month over month. Uh, year over year, they're up slightly in Toronto, but in Mississauga, both year over year and month over month, condo sales are down. So if you're a condo seller, uh, this is not a good time for you. But if you're a condo buyer, you have all the leverage, right? So if you're looking to get into the condo market, this is good for downsizers, right? So you sell your house and you want to buy a condo or first time home buyers, if that's uh, what you can afford, that's your price point. It's a great time for you um, because there's hardly any competition. You know, so that gives you uh, negotiating power and it gives you buying power. So something to consider for sure. Um, all right. So uh, I'll take any questions if there are out there. Uh, I did have a question come in via DM. Uh, and, and thank you so much for the person who sent it. Uh, and the question is, I'm thinking of downsizing or should I wait? Okay. Great question. But it's a very... Um, individual question, very personal question. I don't think I can answer this on a general uh, sentiment because there's so much to consider, right? Um, you know, what can you qualify for? Uh, what is your, you know, current situation, right? Um, so there's just so many factors involved in that. Uh, but I just mentioned a minute ago that if you have made the decision to downsize, let's say you want to move from a house to a condo, this would be a good time because the condo market is very slow. There's no competition uh, out there. So uh, you could probably get a really good deal uh, for that. Uh, and as far as the uh, sale of the house goes, I believe things will pick up a little bit going forward, especially if we ha do have a rate cut coming up uh, this month. Uh, so it may not be a bad time to sell. The fall market is generally a good time to sell. So it may be a good time to sell and an even better time to get into the condo market if you are downsizing. Now, if you're downsizing into another house, you know, um, depends on the area that you're moving to. So that's the other consideration that you have to think about. You know, if you're buying and selling in the same market, then it really makes no difference. The timing makes no difference because if you sell for more, you're gonna end up paying more. But if you sell for less, then you end up, you know, buying for less. So um, if you're buying and selling in the same market, it really, really doesn't matter on the timing. You have to look at your own situation. Are you ready to uh, make that move? Are you ready to downsize? Uh, so talk to your realtor, uh, you know, have a good conversation uh, with your realtor uh, so you can determine if this is a good time for you to downsize. Hope that helps. Uh, and if there are any other questions, by all means, uh, you can ask them here. Otherwise, uh, have a great afternoon, uh, everyone, and uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks.